The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International.
Joy. 
Come on and lift your hands and lift your voices and praise Him. Let everything that hath breath praise Him. Give Him all the glory. Give Him all the praise. Father, we thank you for your presence on this 1,367 days of the stand. As we stand for our brothers and sisters around the world that are still not able to. As we stand for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. As they told us we'd have to shut down and we said no. We said no, we're not shutting down. <laughs> we'll never shut down. If it means death, then so be it. But we will never bow. And thank you that your grace has carried us. Now, four years later, here we are on this field as we stand here and worship you and praise you. I pray for every person that's come here today. I pray that not one would leave you the same way they came. Touch each and every life. Lord, you know exactly what your people need. Thank you for this past week, the victories that you gave us, the things that you helped us through, situations that even were set up for us by the enemy, but yet you brought us out strong. Thank you. Thank you that even this next week, whatever the enemy was planning is canceled. Whatever the enemy was planning is canceled this next week. Thank you that this next week shall be a week of great victory for your people and for your church. Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, that between now and next Sunday, we'll see many, many miracles. Touch each person here today. Save, heal, restore, renew, revive, empower, grace, and equip your people. Thank you. Without you, we can do absolutely nothing. We know that. 
and we depended upon you. We come humbly this morning. We come hungry this morning. We say, Lord, have your way in us. And we're not leaving here till it's finished. And we're leaving here with whatever we need from heaven. So come. And Lord, if my brother or sister around me doesn't want what you have for them, I'll take their portion. I'm going to take everything I can today because I desperately need it. And I've come to receive from your hand. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty and wonderful, majestic name. And everyone said, Amen. I'd rather have Jesus than anything. Come on. Let this be the cry of your heart today. Have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be true to His dear cause. I'd rather.
so I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Oh, I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's do favorite song of all. I love this one. It's one of my favorites. And then we'll move on today. Amen. Come on. So please, in truth, as 
Hallelujah. Well, how many are happy to be here this morning? Why don't you turn and greet two or three people? Thank you to the orchestra, the band, the singers. You may be seated. We're welcoming all those that show up an hour later for church. Said we welcome all those that show up one hour later for church. The nightmare here at the river is this Sunday. It's the, it's the worst thing for me because everybody doesn't change their clock and then it's spring break. Everybody goes AWOL, and then they get there an hour late if they do show up. Anyway, but I'm glad you came here this morning. Amen. If anybody didn't get sleep, it's me. So we lost sleep on Friday night and, and last night. So I was up at 3 this morning, but how many are awake here this morning? Who came ready to receive this morning? We're about to give away another motor vehicle. And this one, I believe, is a 2022. I think it looks like a Honda Accord Sports Edition. Sebastian, so Eric, if you want to come, let's do that right now. Somebody said, Pastor, it was my car. Yeah, but you overslept and you didn't show up. It's not my fault. It looks like a great car. It's a great car. Two-year-old Honda Accord, wow. 2020, 2022 sports edition, great vehicle. And it's somebody in this bucket's car, so. I need a drum roll. And Bonnie Chamberlain, come down and get your brand new car. <laughs> Pass. All right. Are you happy? Yes, Were you praying? Oh, Were you yes, I've been praying for Did you need it? Oh, I need it badly. My car's 23 years old. We'll go have a look. Praise God. <laughs> Her car's 23 years old. Well, come get your brand new Honda Accord over here.
<laughs> Look, and you match. You match their car. It's perfect. What do you yeah, thank you, God. Hallelujah. God is so good. <laughs> I think I'm drunk. <laughs> oh, he's so wonderful. Oh. Well, congratulations. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Hey, guess what? It's the month of heaps. Heaps. <laughs> Somebody said, "Well, Pastor, I always believe you." Well, don't worry. Next Sunday, I'm doing. I'm giving away another car next Sunday. So. Somebody said, "Why are you doing this?" Because. Of heaps. Yeah, that's why we're doing it. People get heaps of blessings here. I think that's con number 47 that we've been able to give away here from the field. Amen. God bless you. So excited for you, dear sister. God bless you. She's been through so much, if you knew her story. And so for, to see her get blessed today, that's awesome. You know, I felt to do this today. I've been doing this on the road. You know, we coming up on four years. 30th of March will be the, the day of my arrest four years ago. I got arrested the first pass in 150 years to get arrested for keeping the church open. And there were a lot of people, you've heard the story, but I'm going to do something that I haven't done in a while. I talk about this, but I'm going to actually show you here today. But a lot of people, especially even other ministers, said that we were doing it, I was doing it to get attention, like I need attention. <laughs> that uh, I was looking for clicks or, you know, whatever. I, who knows what they think you're doing stuff for. But what they don't understand, they didn't know that I knew about the lockdowns in 2005. And again, I tell people this, I wish I didn't know half of the stuff I know. I wish I didn't know 90% of what I know. But I'd received a visit right after Hurricane Katrina, which took place in August of 2005, September. I'm here. People show up in the lobby, pleased to see me from the Department of Defense. And they brought me five of these five of these packages, and uh, it's, this is called the Department of, uh, of Defense Beneficiaries Pandemic Flu Preparedness Kit, because you know, you need to prepare for the pandemic, <laughs> because the disease is so bad, you don't know you have it, you have to wait for the government to tell you that you're sick. How many knew that? So inside it, uh, contents include pandemic information sheet, two N95 respirators, four surgical masks, and hand sanitizer, which everybody got very familiar with the hand sanitizer. And the back of it says, it says you can make a difference by taking basic precautions. You can protect yourself and your family from pandemic influenza. Which, I mean, we've been dealing with the flu for years. I had the flu when I was a kid. Everybody's, everybody's here has had the flu. You've had the flu. But now this is a pandemic flu, which is different from the flu. So you know. This kit includes instructions on how to decrease your risk of catching pandemic flu and what to do if someone in your family catches pandemic flu, because you're an idiot and you don't know what to do when the flu comes. You've survived for many years with the flu, but now you're playing stupid dumb. <laughs> this kit includes instruction on how to decrease your risk of catching pandemic flu and what to do if someone in your family catches it. Also includes in the kit is a starter supply of waterless hand washing solution and two times of protective mask, which on the mask actually tells you it doesn't protect you from anything. But at least you feel like you're being protected because you've got something covering your face. And I have no problem if you're ugly covering your face. <laughs> the supply, <laughs> sorry. 
the supplies of the kit will not be sufficient for the entire pandemic. You'll be required to purchase replacement supplies as the pandemic pro proceeds. And here's the good news. There is no influenza pandemic yet. Local health and government authorities will notify you when there's a known pandemic and it's beginning and when it's in your community. So they'll be, they'll be telling you everywhere you go, hear he, hear he by proclamation of the king. A known pandemic is in your area. Everybody get out your special pandemic kits and follow the instructions. So we don't want you to die. Anyway. So this kit should be used when the pandemic arrives. So you keep it. You keep it in a special bag. Somebody said, what's that for? That's for, that's for the pandemic. I keep this kit ready. And then on the day you need to find it, you can't find it. Where is it? Johnny took it. Johnny. Johnny! You took the kit. What is it? He ripped the thing to shreds. Now the whole family's going to die because the kit has disappeared. The instruction guide in the kit should be used and read now and kept with the kit for use when needed. Again, because you're a moron. Total book-reading moron. These or similar kits might not be provided to the general public. So you just chop liver. Sorry, you don't get anything. We have provided these kits due to our commitment to the health of the Department of Defense family as it directs impacts our ability to carry out the DOD mission. Now, how many want to hear what's inside here? Hmm, let's see what we have. Shall we? Shall we play a game? And what do we have there? <laughs> Purell, beautiful, beautiful Purell, which many of you became very familiar with during the year 2020. Some of you used it as a deodorant. Some of you <laughs> showered in it. You washed yourself. It became your lotion, your hand lotion. Some of you used it as a cologne. Some of you were so Purelled out that people could smell you coming from a mile away. Some people use it to shine their bald heads. <laughs> then when you saw them, you said, there comes Mr. Clean, I mean, Mr. Purell. <laughs> Hand sanitizer. Moisturizers and vitamin E. <laughs> I think some people even drank some of it. And then what we have here, this is the um, information sheet now. Avoid people with the flu. So immediately you see somebody, the member, if they're even blowing their nose, if they even just sneeze, if they cough, <coughs> you have to avoid, sorry, sorry, I've been told, I can't talk to you, can't talk to you now, sorry, I need to avoid you. Um, when the flu is in your community, which you won't know until it's announced, <laughs> stay at home. Avoid crowds. If you must go out, consider wearing a mask. So you look like you're robbing a bank. <laughs> Try to keep six foot away from people who are coughing or sneezing. So that means the moment somebody coughs or sneezes, you move six foot away. Not five foot three, six foot. Because if you, anything inside of six foot, you're going to die. Just so you know. It's not funny. <laughs> this disease is so brilliant, so AI, it can count. It measures six foot. You're safe. Five foot three. You're dead. It can tell the time. If there's a curfew at nine o'clock, if you're home by 8.59, you're fine. If you just... Something happens, a flat tire in your car, and you only got home at five past nine. Sorry. You're dead. No hope for you. The disease could even count, because at one time they said you should only, the suggestion was only 50 people in the service. 
So if you were there early and you were number 49 and your wife was number 50, if your son came late and he was 51, number 51, you lost your son. He died. <laughs> this is terrible. And the disease was so intelligent that it knew when you went to a restaurant, all you had to do was cover your face, walk to your table, you, you, you find, but the moment you sat down, you could take off your mask because you were then allowed to eat. The disease would allow you to eat food freely without killing you. <laughs> Remarkable. But the moment you got up to go to the toilet, you had to put on a mask again. All this is science. <laughs> and of course, it was in my program, my weekly news program last week. Finocchio, Dr. Finocchio announced that all of the mandates they did were stupid and should never have been done and was excessive. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Idiot. So most people catch the flu by coming into contact with droplets from coughs and sneezes. Oh, I'm sorry, you have too many droplets. <laughs> Wash your hands frequently, again, because you're an idiot and you don't know about how to clean yourself. Wash your hands with soapy water, soapy. <laughs> or alcohol-based waterless hand washing solution before eating or touching your face. Don't touch your face. Do not touch your face. Don't touch your face after coughing or sneezing, after touching surfaces that someone might have coughed or sneezed on. So now how do you know who coughed or sneezed there? You reach out and you touch and say, sir, sir, sir. Somebody was here an hour ago and they sneezed all over this table. I didn't know that. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. After touching surfaces of someone might have coughed or sneezed on, after going out into the community, after caring for someone who has the flu, or touching something, someone who is sick, or they may have touched something. What did you touch? Don't touch me. Get your hands away from me. Don't breathe on me. And then the plan, food, water, and gas, electricity may all be disruptive for periods of time. Medical care and access to non-prescription and prescription medication may be limited. Schools may be closed for one to three months. Plan for child care if schools are closed. Kids should not gather in large groups. Check with the employer if you can work from home. And what policies are in place uh, should we not be able to come to work? If you're sick, stay at home. Uh, which now, they also just announced, the CDC said, just treat COVID now like the flu. Okay, now I'm confused. All right, so you mean no more five day? We just treat it like a flu, okay, all right. Cover your mouth and nose when coughing or sneezing, coughing, which you're supposed to do that anyway. Didn't your parents t tell you? you? You normally just walk up to people and, do <laughs> and cough in their face. Did nobody tell you, cover your mouth when you cough? What kind of morons are we dealing with here? Cough and sneeze into disposable tissues, because you wouldn't want reusable tissues. <laughs> reusable. What's that? It's the new reusable tissue. I've been using this one for five years. When removing the bag, try not to touch the dirty tissues. Check with your local installation of public health authorities about flu clinics and other resources, okay? Depending on how severe the pandemic is, which you won't really know, you may be, have to go home because ultimately the disease is so bad, you don't know you have it, you have to go get tested for it, which normally results in something being shoved up your nostrils, like really up your nostrils, like into your brain. Those with the flu should use separate eating utensils that are washed in hot soapy water. So I mean, it's like your house becomes like a hospital where you're using separate utensils. Don't bring that fork near me. You've just contaminated. 
So the people in your own house become your enemies. Those with the flu should not share objects like pens and remote controls. Disinfect surfaces that are frequently touched like doorknobs, remote controls, light switches, and toilet handles. All, all you need to be doing is disinfecting, basically. An effective disinfectant can be made using a half a cup of household bleach and one gallon of cold water. Thank you. A fever may be the early signs of the flu. Oh, I didn't know that. Take your temperature daily when the flu is in your community. Oh, I'm fine. But I did get sneezed on. I'll take it again. Somebody just sneezed on me. Honey, take my temperature. Masks. The kit is a sample of two types of masks, N95 respirators, two included, surgical masks, four included. Additional masks may be available at a number of different sources to include drug hardware in department stores. And then, unfortunately, here's the news. The mask does not guarantee protection. Hmm. But you should wear it anyway. It said it will reduce, but not eliminate your risk. The best protection is to limit your contact with sick individuals. In other words, stay away from people. The surgical mask should be worn by those ill with the flu and when coughing or sneezing and when they come into close contact less than six feet with others in the family, they should continue to wear the mask until they can no longer uh, coughing and sneezing, which could be weeks and weeks. The N95 respirator or mask should be worn while caring for sick family members if you come within six feet of those that are ill. Either type of mask should reduce but not eliminate your risk of catching the flu. If you need to go out in crowds that are likely to include sick people, N95 masks may provide a greater degree of protection, which then many times they were double masking. How many know they're double masked? Who remembers that? It was like insane. Why don't you put a bag over your head? <laughs> don't share mask. <laughs> don't share mask. <laughs> so silly. Yeah, you could use my mask. <laughs> Don't touch masks. Don't touch masks worn by sick people. If you do, wash your hands right after. Wash your hands before and after putting and taking off your mask. If you're reusing a mask, try not to, to try to touch only the straps. Always wear it at the same side touching your face. Mask can be worn until visibly soiled or wet. Wearing a mask only when necessary will prolong the life of the mask. Because, you know, you want to extend it. I mean, if you've only got one mask and there's no more mask, that's it for the duration of the pandemic. That's it. It, it doesn't matter what color it looks. doesn't matter how soggy it looks. That's your face mask. But better yet, if you go to certain churches, they'll put a scripture on it. And that will make you feel even better that there's a scripture on the front of the mask, Psalm 91. You know, you just feel safer that way, that this has been sanctioned by the bishop. Every individual must be prepared to care for themselves. <laughs> okay. And family members by maintaining items that may be in short supply due to the pandemic influenza outbreak. And they got ibuprofen and Tylenol and a thermometer and a rehydration solution like Pedalite for kids and Gatorade for adults and household bleach for disinfection and cell phone, radio, and batteries, supply of face masks, plastic gloves, and plastic trash bags, and a two week supply of food that does not need refrigeration. Foods like canned beets, fish, beans, fruit, soup, a good example, plan one gallon of water per person per day, and then your prescription medications. And it says, this is not a comprehensive list. You have to go to pandemicflu.gov for additional items and for more instruction, because the thing's so complicated, you actually have to go to school for six weeks to learn how to just to deal with the pandemic. And even then, you're probably gonna die. I know we all find it this amusing the other day. Sorry for bringing it up, but 
a lot of people don't know, they thought I was just doing stuff. I wasn't. I know what I'm doing. I'm not an idiot. And this is no conspiracy theory. This is fact. So there's your little N95 with instructions on how to put it on. <laughs> Which I don't even know how to use them. I've never had one of those. And then what we have here, first aid only. Instruction for donning an ear loop face mask which a lot of people actually wore them like this. <laughs> which, you know, even if you drive down the road in your car, if it's just hanging off your ear, the disease goes, ah, can't touch them, can't touch this. <laughs> or people would take them and just put them below their nostrils, which I never could understand that. Now, here's the crazy thing, yeah. The bottom of the mask, give me this microphone you have here. Blue mic. Just read that out loud where it's made. Made in China. <laughs> made in China. Made in China. <laughs> made in China. Made in China. Wuhan. Made in China. <laughs> this is 2005. <laughs> Made in China. Where the virus comes from. Because some idiot was drinking bat soup. Who drinks bat soup? <laughs> what moron wants a bowl of bat? I'll take, I, what are you doing here? I came for the bat soup. I'll tell you what, it's the best soup I've ever had. <laughs> if you really want to get flavored, add a bit of bat dung in the soup. <laughs> so that, I've got five of those packages that were given to me in September of 2005. I'm, I'm doing this, I know many of you have heard the story, but I'm doing this, we've got millions watching, that people can understand why we made the stand and why we would never back down, because this was a communist takeover of the world using a medical emergency, and most people are totally oblivious to it. They actually thought it was a real genuine pandemic where doctors in the UK are coming out now and saying we euthanized hundreds of thousands of people in the hospitals in the UK to fake the numbers. This is murder of the first degree. And the people don't like it, I don't care because I know what's coming. I know what they're planning for what's coming and I'm not here to talk to you about that. But if the churches don't stand up and the preachers don't have the balls to stand up and tell their congregation, let me tell you right now, you, you need to leave that church and go somewhere else where there's a pastor that actually has the Kohanis to stand up and not worry about what other people think and not worry about their reputation and protect the congregation. And I'm not trying to be mean, but this is not a game. And just because it was 2020 does not mean to say anything's finished. They are frantic right now. All of this stuff is decided out of Europe. Everything comes from the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the World Economic Forum. They have no authority over us right here. This is sovereign territory right where we are right here. They have no authority. They have no authority to tell us what we do, what we preach, where we go. Absolutely nothing. We have the authority. And no government official has any authority over us here in this place. Amen. Absolutely not. Sorry. 
and this is not negotiable. And I'm not angry. I'm actually happy this morning. I'm not angry. I'm just telling you the facts. And you need to be informed so you can tell your friends and family the facts and tell them to get their heads out of the rear end of CNN and Dr. Fauci and all of these liars that are from the pit of hell. And all these government officials that all they do is lie to everybody. So play the two clips, if you would, please, 2005 of me here at our October conference trying to inform everybody, but I don't know how to tell everybody because I look like a total idiot. And so there people go, there goes Pastor Rodney again, ranting about something. No, I'm trying to wake everybody up. An alarm clock is not something so faint you can't hear it. Hello. How many know what I'm talking about? Alarm clock is something loud, loud, so you can wake up. Somebody has to make a noise to jolt people to wake them up. Roll it. It's not about building the so-called successful church because as for many people in the Gulf states found and there are major mega churches in New Orleans that don't even exist anymore. 20, 30,000 member churches, boom, gone, finished. So no matter what you build, it could be gone. Then what do you have? What if suddenly we were not able to meet at all? There's this new, new epidemic breaking out of this bird flu. President Bush said he would quarantine, quarantine whole cities in America. Can you imagine what would happen if whole cities in America were quarantined? That means you wouldn't be able to move. Now, somebody said, is that going to happen? I don't know. I don't really care, to be honest with you, because I'll tell you what, we are living in the last days, and things are going to get a lot worse. Things are not going to get better. For the church and for the kingdom of God, they're going to get better, but for the world, it's going to get a lot worse. I'm telling you right now. <clears throat> These are the end times. These are the last days. The Bible says men's hearts will fail them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. So we've got to realize we've got two kingdoms running here and they're running parallel. One's the kingdom of God, the other's the kingdom of man. The kingdom of man is coming to nothing. The kingdom of man is being shaken. The kingdom of man is going to be turned inside out. The kingdom of God will keep on going. Can you say amen? When God speaks, it always prepares people for what's coming. And America is not ready for what's coming. America, the American people, and the American church is not prepared for what is about to come in this land. And if people say they hear the voice of God, then they'll be hearing what the Lord says, and they'll be a step ahead of the enemy, because God will always prepare his people. And you've heard me say this many times before, that people are not ready for what's coming. What happened in Katrina is a little taste. Somebody said, are you talking about another hurricane? I'm not talking about anything. I'm just telling you what's coming. People are not ready for. So that's it, folks. Thank you for your enthusiasm over this. Well, we're on day 1367 of the stand. <laughs> Yesterday was a great car show. We had uh, 677 visitors, 93 exhibitor cars, total of 313 decisions for Christ. 
That brings our total car shows from March 2021 to March 24, total in attendance, 19,822 exhibit cost 2,569, total souls 4,966 decisions. Can you say amen? And then obviously Healing School continues tomorrow and then every two weeks there's Healing School so you can register, go to revival.com and register for that. Well, we got back in the early hours of Saturday morning from a trip through Mississippi and ended up in Memphis. We were in Hattiesburg, Jackson, Yazoo City, Tupelo, South Haven, and then Memphis. Um, Hattiesburg was, was great, so was Jackson, Yazoo City, Tupelo, and South Haven. When, I, when we went through Mississippi, what blew me away was Jackson looked like a war zone. It was probably the most run-down place I've ever seen, broken down everything. I, I couldn't believe it. But obviously, it's the capital that's run by a bunch of communists. Tupelo was the most beautiful little place. I was so shocked at it. Obviously, it was the home of Elvis, so we were walking around going, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> but it, you could not believe the difference between Jackson and Tupelo. Now, the craziest thing that happened, I'll just run through this, and then we've got an overview video we'll play for you. But we had um, 269 saved in Hattiesburg, 94 in Jackson, 68 in Yazoo. Yazoo is a city of 9,000 people. <clears throat> At Tupelo, we had 113 saved. And then South Haven, we had 71 saved. And then in Memphis, 202. So a total of 18, 817 decisions. Total attendance of 2,667. With total mobilized 2,065 people that said they would tell people about Jesus. So we've got an overview video. If you play that for me, run that for us. A little highlight overview. The reason why we came here tonight was to light a fire. Every single one of you must catch on fire. There was a great awakening in the 1700s that shook America in the cold. There was a great awakening in the 1800s. And that's what we believe in God for, it's a great spiritual awakening. We cannot have this limited to the pulpit. It has to transcend to the pew. Fire comes for a purpose. The fire comes so that we can reach out to a lost and dying world. And that's why Jesus came. He loves people. God needs your mouth. He needs your hands. He needs your feet. It's time to get activated. Now, you know how I tell everything here. Crazy stuff happened on Sunday afternoon when we left here. We were stuck on the runway and couldn't take off. And they said there was a lay probably going to be of several hours. Well, we thought it was just the storms, the thunderstorms. So I said to the two pilots that were flying us, and I said, uh, what's actually going on here? He said, well, it's all the, the flight patterns of all the planes that are flying. He said, but we're negotiating with the tower. We took off and we were flying at about eight, between eight to 9,000 feet over the Gulf. And I said, that's the lowest I've ever flown. So I went up and spoke to the pilots. I said, I've never flown this low. In actual fact, then we went down to 4,600 feet. So we were like low. And he said, look, if we go up higher, we have to get back into the traffic pattern. And I negotiated with the traffic control that we would fly it this way till we until we get to where we're going. And even when we got to Mississippi, there were storms. So he was flying us through the storms. And we landed, and in actual fact, got us on time for the meeting and stuff like that. So I, I said to him, this is unusual. He said, it's totally unusual. I've never seen anything like it. Well, then Monday, when we had to move locations, again, we were held up on the ground. 
And I said to him, what's actually going on? He said, the traffic control has been totally disrupted. Remember, I told you what they were going to do? So when you see all the plane delays, when you see all the stuff going on, all that's by perp on purpose. Nothing is by accident. And we, I got to experience that firsthand. Then when we flown to Memphis, that was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. So we land in Memphis, and I'm looking, and there's buses, military buses of prisoners. And there's planes coming in. I said, what in the world is going on here? I said, these are not illegals being flown. In. They said, no, this is called con air. I said, what do you mean con air? They said, every two weeks, hundreds of prisoners are brought here, and they've flown to different prison systems across America. And I'm standing there looking at this going, you've got to be kidding me. So if you can imagine why hundreds of prisoners are being taken to Memphis, put on Boeings, sent to other prisons. Stuff's happening in this country that irritates me. You won't see that on the news. I saw it with my own eyes. I'm just telling you what's going on. And if you watch my news program today, you'll see some stuff that I put out on the news. I can't put it out right now here, but don't forget to watch the news today. The nation of Haiti is in a total upheaval right now. It's being roamed by gangs of cannibals. Cannibals. So that's where Haiti is right now. Anyway, moving right along. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor, I wish we didn't know all these things. Listen, that's why you better get on fire for God. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll get eaten by the next gang that comes through. Some of you won't be anything. They'd leave you. You'd be a light snack. But some of you would be a buffet for a family of four. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> How many know I'm going to tell you everything? Okay, good. Are you happy with that? Uh, should I ease back? Should I not, should I not tell you everything? Huh? Who wants by vote of thumbs up for me to continue to tell you everything? Who doesn't want me to just do your thumbs down like this? People are afraid. They, they, they don't want their thumbs to be broken. All right, well, ladies' conference coming up. Over 4,425 have been registered that are about to appear in the house. And then there's another 1,325 registered for online, so 5,750. So we're excited about that. Let's roll the clip for the ladies' conference, if you would, please. You know, it's just not a one touch, one experience. But it's pressing in. You're going to leave changed. You're going to leave different. It's not going to evaporate. It's not going to leave you. Some of you, he's going to start something in you. Some of you, he's going to continue what he's done. Some of you, he's going to take you to another level. Just let God do what he wants to do. available and I need to make myself available and together the will of God is done. Just one person gets hungry, it'll overflow to many lives. Then of course, we, uh, how many days now, past Eric? 24 days and we leave for Africa for one month. We're getting everything ready, seven countries. It's going to be great. And then we were really praying about Cape Town because how many know we have the stadium for three days with a total of 86,000 people that are registered? And one of the problems that we're having, there is no other facility in the city for us to use other than the stadium. And the stadium is limited because of health and fire codes and just getting people in and out to the maximum about 30,000 people. That's it. 
and you know how they protect the turf for the football and all that kind of stuff. It's a bigger stadium, but that's like hallowed ground. They said, no, it didn't matter what we paid, we can't use it. So when we were looking, at, we were sitting on Friday looking at the plans, Pastor Eric, myself, Pastor Ray, Octavia, and we're looking at the plans, and they want to set up the whole platform with the screens and everything, which would immediately, we would lose 4,000 people because how are they going to sit behind all that? And as I was sitting there, suddenly in a flash, I saw the solution. And the Lord reminded me, he said, do you remember how people used to have mass crusades before the event of tele as far as screens and stuff like that? Our ministry was probably one of the first ministries that started using giant screens from the big projectors that we had to have. And even then, they didn't work until you switched all the lights off because it was so, you know, the light's so bright, you can't see it. I mean, look there, you can see that today, but you couldn't see that back in the 90s. But if you went back to the 60s or the 70s, they didn't have giant screens. So if you went to an event, the platform really was on the field. It wasn't this big, huge thing with all these big screens. And I started pulling the pictures of Billy Graham. If you'll just put them up on the screen, you'll see. Look at the, look what the platform was. No screens. Next. Look, in the middle, there was 100,000 people there. Next. Next, just keep clanking them through. The platform's right there where you see the boards. Look at there, in the middle of the field. And don't wait for me to say, guys, just keep turning it over. Look. So, so all of this stuff is about the sound, guys, the sound again, the lights, the spotlights, and the production television screens taking over the whole venue. And I'm going back to the 60s. I'm, I'm changing everything the way we do crusades. No more. Obviously, we have a screen here because we play videos, but we're not, you don't play videos at a mass crusade. You have a meeting. Are you with me? And people are there to hear the gospel. And I remembered when I was with Brother Reinhard in Nigeria, we had eight, over 850,000 people there. When I walked to the back of the field, you, the platform looked like that. You couldn't see anybody on the platform, but everybody was riveted. And you could hear, Africa will be saved. You could hear it at the back of the field but you could see it, the platform. So everybody wants to see and all that kind of stuff. We don't need that. So I just scrapped that and saved ourselves 4,700 seats. So we're gonna be able to pack the place now. Can you say amen? And it's all this modern generation that always wants to be seen. It's about the proclamation of the gospel. It's not about yourself on a big screen. Can you say amen? So isn't the Lord good? I mean, he just, he said to me, do you remember all the crusades you watched as a little boy? I said, yes. He said, how many of them had screens? I said, none. There were no screens. Well, the wind is blowing everything off there. Jeffrey, why didn't you just stay underneath? <laughs> if you can hide there. No, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, don't. <laughs> he'll, he'll do that. But anyway, so... So I just want to say this to all the other evangelists. You don't need all the screens and stuff. Just go preach the gospel. I'll say it again to every evangelist. You don't need all the stuff. Just go preach the gospel. I'll say it one more time. You don't need all that stuff. You just need the power of God and go preach the gospel. It's nonsense. And it's a pain in the neck and a few other places. Just dealing with the different companies that you have to deal with. Okay, moving right along. 
After that, of course, we got the men, ministers leaders conference coming up. Let's just play that, and then we'll go to the testimonies. Ministers leaders. Well, we're going to have some testimonies. While they're coming, let me pray with you. you. You guys leave in the morning for Ecuador. Who's going with you? Come, let's pray. Come stand over here. Just stretch your hand out towards them. They, how long are you gone for? A week? Ecuador. Stretch your hands out towards them. Let's pray. Father, in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, thank you for all your precious people. As they make this step and they fly into Ecuador, I thank you at the moment their feet touch the ground and the anointing of God is released and a supernatural touch of heaven in the name of the Lord Jesus and the fuego de Dios, the touch of heaven in Jesus' name. That's it right now. Ha, poroso, paranang, barato, mombo, riesto. Ecuador, Ecuador, light, light that fire, light that fire, light that fire, light that fire. Praise God. Thank God for the people that are running all over the planet, coming out of here, going to Venezuela, going all over. Amen. Some of you are getting ready for what God's going to do and where you're going to go. Amen. Trust me, you're not going to sit here for years and just glue yourself to the seat. I'm going to set your tail on fire, and you're going to run with the fire. Can you say amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Well, what's been happening? Pastor Derek, tell us what's been happening. Preach a little bit. Let us know what's been happening. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. And you know, God always makes a way where there seems to be no way. He saves, he delivers. I was just thinking, Pastor, what decision you made, you'll have more room for the altar call now. That, that was the problem. The, now all the people can gather. We're, we're going to put it right in the middle. That's amazing. It, isn't that the solution? I want to say it was my idea. But <laughs> no, I saw, it, I saw it in a flash. And there I thought, was no room for the altar call the other way. Yeah. You would limit that. Yeah. The Lord, the Holy Ghost the knows that. Knows. He knows. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, this week we've seen salvations. The healing, healing school has been powerful. And we've seen God come through in a most amazing way. 
but let's get John and Gerlimo that went out on a soul-winning lab this week on Friday. Tell us what the Lord did on the streets of Tampa. Yes, good morning, River Church. Thank you, Pastor Rodney and Pastor Adonica, so much. This has absolutely changed our lives. So when I first came here, I'd never won a soul to the Lord. I, I didn't even know it was a thing. I'd shared God with people, but I hadn't actually, I hadn't actually, you know, like actually converted someone. So I came here, my first soul winning lab, I went out and I got one soul and I was a bit disappointed, but all of heaven rejoices for one soul, but I wanted the breakthrough. I wanted to go to the next level. I wanted to see like a big group save. So I was praying and I'm like, Lord, I, I want to see that breakthrough. I've seen people come back with 50, 60, 70 souls and I really was pressing in for that breakthrough. And a couple of months ago, I went out soul winning on Riverwalk and there's a rowing club there and I had the opportunity to go up and ask if I could pray for the group. And that was a big step because it was like 70 teenage girls and that freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> and so I went up and I, and I asked the question and the guy said no. And I was like, oh, dang it. Okay, no worries. Well, praise God, I, I had that step of breakthrough. And then we went on a soul winning lab on Friday. Mr. Gill and I were out together and we went back to Riverwalk. And as we got out of the car, we're walking across the bridge. I see this huge group of rowing students coming out of their college. And I said, here we go, this is it, this is the moment. So we were walking back across the bridge with these students and we were trying to soul win some of them and they were standoffish. They were saying, no, get away, we don't want to talk to you, like, leave us alone. And so we were a little bit discouraged, but then the Holy Ghost was like, go talk to the coach again. It's like, all right. So we walked down, I just chit-chatted with them and we got to the, the coach and I said, sir, we'd just really love to pr pray a blessing over your teams. We want to pray for strength and victory in your, in your season. We want to pray protection over their bodies. And so would you mind if we do that? And he was sort of like, uh, sure. So we waited. They did their dynamic warm-up. Little did they know they were warming up for something else. They were warming up for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? <laughs> so... We waited and we waited and then I finally got the opportunity and I exhorted them. I said, guys, we're going to pray for this. We're going to pray for strength, for victory. We're going to pray for ministering angels to protect you. We're going to pray that you are the best team, that you're going to have the best season you've ever had. And halfway through my prayer, I said, I want you to say this out loud. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sin. And 65 young men gave their lives to the Lord. Amen. Okay. And Tell us further what happened. Let me tell you guys the uh, behind the scenes scoop. We, we, when we were there, we, uh, we, were, we saw the people coming, and they were all like, oh, no, thank you. We don't shut up. Get out of here. And it was so awesome to see how God was working with us. Because when, we, when that was happening, I said, God, they're getting away. What do I do? <laughs> so uh, so when, uh, he got the answer. Go and talk to the coach. So we went and followed them. We went to talk to the coach. And when, when the coach said we could do it, I heard God said, Bef uh, before you pray, release the anointing now. So I released the anointing. God started working on their hearts. Because those were the same people that said, no, I don't believe it. Get out of here. I don't care. So God started working with, in, in their hearts. So when we did the prayer... And, and they started saying, dear Lord Jesus, the same people were crying. And they, they, God was moving. So it, it was so awesome to see how John, myself, and the Holy Spirit were working together. And at the end, if you're religious, you can cover your ears. But at the end, God was celebrating with us. We are all celebrating those souls together. So the secret is the word Secret place so you can get overflowing. And then together you obey and you go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. We had healing school this week and we have, uh, I believe it's uh, Martina. Yes. And you brought Elena with you. Yes. And they have flown in <laughs> all the way. From Switzerland. Woo! Came in all the way from Switzerland, desperate for a touch of God. So tell us what God did. Yes. Good morning, River Church. Woo! We came really from Switzerland over for healing school because we know we get an impact and to change everything and need healing. And my 
Elena, I talk for her, she needed healing in her heart because she had a hole in her heart and also mental healing. And on the second day, she had the one-to-one -one with Pastor PJ. And the key was to forgive her father. And he told her that he speaks about her father and that she can say to forgive him. And she did it. And after we go in the worship, and then she cried out, lay down, something leave her. It was overwhelming her and she knows something get away from it and now she knows not only that the mental stuff leave also her heart is healed hallelujah Woo! Woo! yes and we learned and she, she stand on the on the word because we make the pressure on the word and for P first peter 2 24 that the stripes from Jesus healed her, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And this is not enough, we have more. And the second testimony is, she, one, one year before, for a 21 prayer and fasting, she cried out to the Lord that she would like to be married because she had never in her life a relationship to a man. And now, she came and now their husband is here and also we had an um, an outreach last summer the guy came get free came to christ and they would like to get married in july but last sunday pastor rotney thought about that broke every um limitation, limitation and they the lord spoke this week that they get married next thursday <laughs> Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. All the glory to the Lord. Ooh! Thank you so much. Amen. Talk about a miracle. Anything can happen here at the river. Uh, yeah. He's sitting right here. <laughs> Frank, come on. And <laughs> Pastor Rodney started to lay the foundation. Carry on. <laughs> For the heaps. And how many know we, we don't have to wait a whole long time. God always watches over his word to perform his word. Hallelujah. And so let's tell, tell to all, them. To all the other single ladies, what's the problem? Yeah. You'll be married by next weekend. I mean, uh, carry on. I apologize. Good morning. So. To understand my hip testimony, you got to understand that um, I'm a student, but I never planned to be a student. So when I came here last year, I didn't have a sponsor and I didn't have the savings to basically sustain myself here. But I had a word of the Lord. Joshua 1.9, I will be with you wherever you go and I will be with you all the time. <laughs> So when I came here, I got blessed and I was able to sustain myself till October with the blessing and with a beautiful thing called a credit card. But you got to pay those things back. So in October, those finances uh, dried up. And every single one of you will come to a point that you have to decide either, Lord, your word is true or it's not true. But I'm going to die trying. And I just decided to stay here. And in December, I wasn't able to pay my rent. So I had to move out. But a week before I had to move out, someone came up to me looking for a new roommate. Do you know anyone? I said, yeah, well, me, but I have to move in, in January. And he told me, don't worry, you can move in in January and the rent is already paid. The beginning of February, I had to come up with the, with, with the rent. And the 1st of February, there was no rent. But I kept speaking the word. I kept standing on the word because I know I'm a, I'm a tither and I'm a sower of seed. So the 1st of February, nothing came in. The 2nd of February, someone, somebody walked up to me. It's like, here, here's the rent. But I asked the Lord, Lord, you are an on-time God. So would you mind, you know, doing this a little bit earlier? So medium of February, somebody walked up to me. Hey, I'm going to sow a thousand Canadian dollars into your life, which is 700 bucks. And it was enough to pay the rent up front for March. And then last Sunday... The first Sunday of the month of the of the seven months of the heaps, the foundation five months of the heaps, sorry. 
<laughs> I got a little excited. And pastor preached about the heaps. And I grabbed that word because, you know, I needed the rent for the next month, etc. Um, but the rent for March was already paid. But in the evening, I felt, Lord, I need, a, first of all, I need desperately, I need a haircut. And I wanted to sew in someone else, uh, an, another student, the rent. Because you sew where you want to go. So in the evening, I sold my last six bucks. I was like, Lord, I'm used to, to get by by nothing. I know I can trust you. So I sold my last six bucks and I was excited because it was going to come. And somebody walked up to me. Hey, how much is your rent? And they gave me the rent for next month. But my rent was already paid for March. So what do you do? You sew into someone else. So I sold in, into another student. And one day later, I shared the whole testimony, what, I, what I'm sharing with you guys. And with a certain person. And that person was like, how much is your rent? I'm like, well, X amount. And he was like, I'm going to pay your rent till this summer. And I'm going to tell you right now. I'm, this, is, this is important. Before I came here, I watched a, a sermon. And I don't know from wh whom it was. But it was someone, he said, if you sow, if you tithe, every time that you sow and tithe, there's a cloud above you that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that cloud is going to burst out. It's going to be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So if you're believing for something, hold fast. Keep sowing and keep believing. Because the Bible tells us, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with all prayer and supplication. Make your request known unto God. And then be thankful. Walk in that victory. And you're going to see it come to pass. You're going to see that cloud burst out. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> So he, I mean, he basically is here as a foreign student illegally, and uh, <laughs> so the the best thing for foreign students that are illegal go through Mexico, come through the border, and you'll get everything that you need. I mean, make it easier on yourself. You could even get a house in California tomorrow. Okay, carry right on. Okay, now tell us what the Lord did for you financially. Well, how do you? You guys know that we still forgot that is more than enough. And also that this is the year, personally, for all of our debt to be canceled. That's what the Lord Amen. spoke to me. So I took a hold of that, and I was like, okay, Lord, I need this certain amount. Because I just go, was like, I'm going to go in steps. So I was like, Lord, I need this certain amount canceled by, and I was like, as soon as possible. So then I was like, Lord, I was giving him a list. I can do this. I can do that in my action for my faith. And he's like, no, just commit it onto me. So I was like, okay, Lord, I'm committing this $3,200 onto you, and it's going to be done. So then I was sitting in class, and he's like, um, ask to go out to lunch with your grandma. I was like, okay, Lord, you're going to have to take care of all of that. You're going to have to take care of the gas to get there, and you're going to have to take care of the bill. Because if I ask someone to go to lunch, then I have to pay. So he took care of all of that. He took care of the lunch, the gas, and everything to get there. Because everything in the natural didn't even look like it was possible. But how much do we know that God supplies all our need according to his riches and glory, not according to what we think in our heads. So then after lunch, um, I got a notification knowing that $3,200 was completely wiped away, supernaturally done, completed. And then... We were in the parking lot, and I looked at my husband, and I was like, it's March 2nd. It is the heaps, and this is the start of the heaps. And it was just confirmation to me that God hears us when we pray, and everything else that we have asked of him is coming in as well. So we can take a hold of that. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, say this on me, say the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Well, how's the first week, of the first month of the heaps been? So I want to continue on part two this morning. Let's just pray. Father, let every ear be anointed to hear 
and every heart receive to receive all that you have today, we pray. Thank you for blessing your people. Thank you, Lord, that some have even received husbands, you know. <laughs> Cars, all kinds of things that are happening. Thank you for the miracles that are happening across this congregation. Things, Lord, that we don't even understand that you're doing. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. Let this next week be a miraculous week, we pray, in the life of each and every person. And everyone said, amen. So I've called this heaps message, the blessing, the blessing. Let me read the passage of scripture that's our foundation text from 2 Chronicles chapter 31, verse 4 through 10. It says, moreover, he commanded the people that dwell at Jerusalem to give a portion of the priests and the Levites that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. And the Bible says, as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance of first fruits, corn, wine, oil, and honey, and of all the increase of the field and the tithe of all things they brought in abundantly. Now, if you're visiting for the first time, when you hear the word tithe, you say, oh, well, the, you know, obviously that's why you're teaching on this. No, that's not why I'm teaching. I'm teaching on this because this is the word of the Lord. And it says they brought it in abundantly. But if they brought it in abundantly, it must be because they were blessed abundantly. Amen. You can't bring in abundantly what you don't have. That's right. That's right. That's right. So God was blessing his people. And as they responded to the call, the blessings began to flow. And concerning the children of Israel and Judah, they dwell in the cities of Judah. They also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep and the tithe of holy things, which were consecrated to the Lord their God and laid them by heaps. I told you this last week, that when you get multi multiples of anything, you have to pile it up. When you're building a house and you bring in all the, the wood or the, or the bricks or whatever, you have to pile it up. One row is not a heap. If we take these chairs and we have to clear the field as we do for the car shows or whatever, you pile these chairs in heaps. A heap means a whole lot. And it says here, they laid them by heaps. In the third month, they began to lay a foundation in the heaps and finish them in the seventh month. So the blessing did not stop. And for us, the third month is March, April, 4th, May, the 5th, June, the 6th, and July, the 7th. So if we take God's word literally, which I'm doing here today, that means this month of March, as we've started, you will see an increase in your life, in everything that you do, in everything that you touch. If you grab a hold of the word and mix your faith with it, that it will begin to be laid up heaps upon heaps, and you'll see it. It'll happen all the way till the end of the month of July. Can you say amen? amen? And when Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. In other words, you shall be so blessed that everyone that sees you will realize it's the Lord. It's all God, and they're going to give God the glory, even though they don't understand it, even though they might try to question you later, but they're going to give God the glory because God blesses his people. That's what he always does. Throughout Scripture, when you go right back from Genesis through to Revelation, you'll see anyone that served God with all their heart, the Lord blessed them, favored them, poured out his grace, his anointing upon their life. And everything that everybody else wanted, he gave to his people. That's why the Word tells you, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that the heathen are looking for will be added to you. You won't have to go at it. It will be added unto you. So it says here, then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. In other words, we know this is God, but please can you explain a little further? And Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, answered and said, since the people began to bring the offerings to the house of the Lord, we have enough to eat and left plenty for the Lord has blessed his people, and that which is left is this great store. Since the people. Now, 
The people could have rejected the commandment of the Lord to break. They could have rejected. Just like the people here today. who say, I don't believe any of that. There's no, I'm not going to stop preaching what I preach because you don't believe. For the ones that do believe, they will see the hand of God. Amen. They will see the blessing of God. You, you have to take God's word personally. You have to say, you know what? And that's what my wife and I did all those years ago. We said, bless God. If nobody else is going to get blessed, we're going to get blessed because we're going to take God's word personally. Amen. Somebody said, well, you can't take it literally. Yeah, well, you don't take it illiterally. <laughs> we believe it. We believe. It. Lord, I'm putting myself right here in line that this month of March is the first month of the laying of the foundation of the heaps. And then we're going to march from here to the end of July, and we're going to see blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon blessing. In whatever we put our hand to, we will prosper, and we'll see the increase come. Amen. So I'm asking you here today as your pastor, what do you believe in the Lord for in your personal life, in your home, in your marriage, in your children, your grandchildren, your business, your ministry, whatever endeavor that you are involved in? Somebody said, well, how, how do I grab a hold of it? By believing it, by faith. You can't go out and put, I'm going to go work for this. You can't work for this. Because there are people working. They're not seeing heaps. There's people all over the city working every day. They don't see any heaps. They've got a heap of trouble, heap of confusion, heap of worry, heap of a mother-in-law, you know. <laughs> Heaps of migraine headaches, makes heaps of uh, Tylenol and what other stuff they're taking to calm their nerves down. I meet people that are, they're working all the time, but they run around like a chicken with their head chopped off. But the Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. So there won't be any sorrow coming your way. There'll be blessing upon blessing Amen. upon blessing Amen. upon blessing. Amen. Upon blessing. I condemn everyone in this field to blessing. I condemn everyone in this field to extreme, excessive, abundant blessings of heaps upon heaps and heaps. I'm asking the Lord to surprise some of you this week. In actual fact, shock them. Shock them and rock them. Yes. Yes. People run up to you and say, Pastor, can you believe it? It works. <laughs> wow, you mean the stuff I'm preaching actually works? Amazing. <laughs> you thought I was just talking, didn't you? It gives you people, it gives you an understanding of how people actually view church and the message that's coming. Uh, we're going to go hear a message. It'll be a nice talk. I'm not here giving some kind of a nice talk. And don't sit here and get mad because somebody get blessed and you say, well, how come they get blessed and I didn't get blessed? You get blessed. Just change your attitude. <laughs> now, point number one, and of course you should have the bulletin with all the notes. If you have a bulletin, it means you stopped by one of the greeters and actually took one from them. If you don't have a bulletin, it means you totally ignored the greeters and just walked by them because you were distracted. If you'd like a bulletin, raise your hand, they'll get one to you. Let me see all the ones that didn't get. Can you get Mr. Udegaard a bulletin over here, please? <laughs> and over here, of course, the, the young one showed up late again today. Everybody showed up late. I watched all of them. Three couples come, come dragging their tails in here. Oh, God. All right. Point number one. You must be blessed. How can you help people if you can't even help yourself? In actual fact, it's a selfish place to be in. We say, well, I don't want any blessing. 
If you should want blessing for no other reason so that you could be a greater blessing. Even if you didn't need more, you should be pushing for more so more can come through you. If I didn't need more, if you need less, you are still a conduit for the blessing to flow through. God blesses you to make you a blessing. Somebody say, say this on me, say, I must be blessed. I will be blessed. I am blessed. And that's it. And if the devil doesn't like it, I was going to say he can kiss my behind, but then we'll just leave it at that. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to find something that rhymed, but it didn't come to me at that juncture. You can't bless others if you're not blessed. You cannot be a blessing unless you're blessed. Verse 5 says, as soon as the commandment came, the people began to bring their tithes and offerings. Verse 10, from the time the people began to bring them in, there was more than enough. There was more than enough for the work of the ministry. There was more than enough for the people bringing the offerings. The multiplication was so great that there was a great store of overflow and overabundance on both sides, which is what we are believing for every single one of you, that there will be an overabundance. It will say overabundance. Say it again, overabundance. So the blessing is not just one-sided. It's for every single one of you here today. Acknowledge this. Say this out loud. I cannot bless unless I'm blessed. Now, two passages of Scripture refer to this, Malachi 3 and 10 and Ephesians 3.20. When you obey God, you will not have any room to put the blessing. There won't be room enough to receive the blessing. Somebody said, Pastor, we don't have room right now. You're not going to have any room. <laughs> Who would say with the upper of a hand, I'm running out of room? Yeah. Wave your hand at me. You're running out of room for blessing. Thank you, Jesus. You'll never have room. I just tell you that Hallelujah. you're never going to have the room. There won't be enough room Amen. for you to receive the blessing of heaven Hallelujah. upon your life Hallelujah. because that's how God operates. Thank you. Can you say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's just talk about the church for a moment, for the River Church. For this month of March, April, May, June, July, these months number three all the way to seven, we decree over you blessings that cannot be contained. Amen. And I'm talking to every member here Amen. of this church yes. on every side. Yes, Lord. Not merely the things you need, but things that will be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. In other words, the Lord blessing you with something you didn't even want, you didn't even actually need, but was a real blessing. I saw that, you know, from what happened with the car that came to me, that, that um, racing was really a, it's a modified now racing vehicle. I never knew I would race. I never even wanted to race. I never even thought about racing. I didn't even know where I would race. And the thing comes out of the blue. It's a blue car. <laughs> and I'm now having the greatest fun of my life running around the track at very high speeds thinking, how did I get myself here? I, I didn't even know that how this happened. <laughs> Somebody said, was it a desire? Um, there was nothing to race on. They built that place during COVID. The guy spent $200 million and built a racetrack for me to race on. Come on. I don't think you understand. So I'm racing down thinking, how did I even get into this? What am I even doing here? So you're going to find yourself doing things that you didn't have any idea that you would end up doing but it's going to be a blessing to you. And through that avenue, you're going to be made a blessing to many people. You're going to meet other people. You're going to go into places. So the Lord's going to surprise you because that's all a part of the heaps. It's not just the thing that you need. 
It's a thing that the Lord just wants you. You know, I'm going to, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm to bless them with this over here. Lord, I'd even ask for it. I know you didn't ask for it, son, but I just want to bless you. I know you didn't ask for it, my daughter, but I just want to give it to you because I love you. I thought we'd get a little bit more response out of that one. So involving this, what I'm talking about, are what we call surprises. Expect surprises. I'm also, Lord, let there be a surprise for the month of March, a surprise for the month of April, a surprise for the month of May, a surprise for the month of June, and then a big surprise for July. Just reach out with your heart and grab it. Say, I'll tell you what, that's mine. I tell you, that's mine. That's mine, that's mine. So not many things to eat, but things to be a blessing to you. Your friends and family and loved ones will all benefit. And they will look at you and say, I'm so glad you got blessed. We are now enjoying this blessing because you got blessed. Oh, thank you, Pastor. You took me racing. I, I would never be able to do that. So there are things you're going to do that's going to break through for others that others can enjoy the blessing upon your life. Because the blessing is not just for you. The blessing is to share the blessing. Amen. And then I list down here cars, which we saw one today, property, houses, businesses. And then that God is anointing people in the area of business, raising up 300 millionaires. Yeah, at the river. Now, number three, of course, it talks about plenty. Plenty. Everybody say plenty. plenty. Since the people began to bring the offering to the house of the Lord, we have enough to eat and plenty left over. What are we dealing with when you think about the world? Everyone talks about lack. They all talk about lack. Everything that drives humanity is based on lack. There's not enough. There's a shortage. We're going to run out. We won't be able to make it. And so then people then are motivated by fear to try to work like a hamster in a wheel going round and round, trying to get somewhere so they can say, oh, I'm going to make it. We won't run out. Yet you know, in any economic downturn, as what took place when everything crashed during the Great Depression, there were people that were billionaires that were sweeping streets. I don't mean to belabor this, but I remember when the hurricane hit down Naples, Fort Myers area, we were there first before FEMA and Red Cross. And there were billionaires, listen to this, you might not believe this, they were walking the streets because they had no food in the house. They had cash, but no place would use it because there was no place to receive it. Stuff was washed away. They had credit cards, but there were no machines to swipe and there were no banks to get cash out of. So they're walking around living in a 10, 12, 15, $30 million mansion with no food. And they were... They didn't know what to do when we gave them food and water. We blessed them with a supply. They, they never had that happen before. They never even thought along those lines. Somebody said, well, they could have driven out. Their Tesla would not leave the garage. <laughs> there was no energy to charge their car. So here you are on foot, a multi-gazillion air, you have no food, you've got no water. You might have all the money, but you can't access it. And then the Lord used this church to take $2.5 million worth of food and everything south That's and right. to go and bless people and to help them. At the same time we were building at the same time we were doing all this, we were helping. 
And the Lord helped us do both. Because I still said, Lord, this is just great. Hurricanes, right at the time I'm starting to build. These stinking hurricanes. I can't believe it. And the Lord said, don't worry about it. Just help the people. I'll help you with the building. And he did. And we helped the people. So what will be left over will be plenty. You're going to have collections upon collections of plenty of heaps. It's not that you're looking for it. It's not that you're even asking for it. It's what happened in the Scripture. As I told you last week, we're not here to maintain or survive. We're here to thrive. And that's what you will do in 2024. I see a thriving church. I see a thriving group of people. I see a thriving membership, people that are flourishing in the courts of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's people here that are senior that you say, well, Pastor, I don't have the resources that I'd like to have. It, that means absolutely, again, this is not what you have. This is what God has. And it's heaven's blessing and heaven's reign coming down upon your life. Amen. So everybody say plenty. plenty. Then number four, overflowing blessings. Blessings that overflow. Now, when you fill up a cup to the top, what happens to it? If you keep pouring, it overflows. The psalmist said, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. That's what I decree for you through the end of the month of August, that your cup shall overflow with the blessing of heaven upon your life, yes, upon your wife, Amen. upon your children, Amen. upon your life, upon your grandkids, Hallelujah. upon your business, upon your ministry. Whatever you touch, whatever you touch shall overflow. Amen. I, mean, I was thinking about it on Friday. I mean, as you said, the solution for the crusade how many people was going to limit us on every side? And then suddenly the Lord said, think back to the meetings you saw as a kid. Where were the screens? I said, there weren't any. He said, where were the big platforms with the coverings over it? What did you do if it rained? You preached in the rain. Have we done that? We did that here. Somebody said, well, it rains in Cape Town. It rains in Tampa. So we'll just wear a raincoat and we'll preach in the rain. Can you say amen? amen? Not like a bunch of sugar babies that will melt. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Overflowing blessing. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 17. He said, beware lest you say in your mind and heart, my pound, the might of my hand that got me this wealth. You shall earnestly remember the Lord your God. It's he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore as it is to this day. So God put you on this earth to succeed. Genesis 1 and 28 says, and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Somebody said he told that to Adam. It doesn't matter. You didn't live in the time of Adam. You're living now in the time of you and you need to do your fair share of being fruitful and multiplying and replenishing the earth. Amen. Okay, I'll go try it over this side. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't live in the time of Adam. You live in the time of you. Yes. And you need to be the one yes. that is fruitful, that's Woo. multiplying and replenishing the earth. Yes. What's over? Why, why is this side more lively than that side? <laughs> Psalm 1, Joshua 1 talks about delighting in the word of the Lord, which for everyone that would delight in the word of God today, the blessing shall come upon you. It says meditate therein day and night. And keep it in my mouth by way of my confession. 
Therefore, my way will be prosperous and I will have good success. So you want to check what's coming out of your mouth. Somebody said, I'll tell you, I went again now this Sunday, second Sunday in a row of March. Pastor was on this heaps thing. And every now and then people go heaps. And I don't even understand it. And he told me that I'm going to get blessed, but I ain't never seen nothing like that. I ordered me some jalapeno poppers, and when I got them, there were no jalapenos. It was just poppers. I ordered me a bucket of chicken wings, and there were no wings, just some chicken. Anyone can get negative over anything. Yeah. In actual fact, every positive came out of a negative. Any testimony came out of a total failure. I was lost. I was undone. I was dying. I was blind. I was sick. I was diseased. I was bankrupt. They were coming away. They, I got arrested and my mugshot went around the world. I mean, and all of this. And then, boom, the turnaround. Boom, the, the transformation. Boom, the miracle happened. What happened? God intervened in your life and turned a hopeless situation around. Amen. And now you've got something to shout about. Don't, don't look at where you are now and then grumble about it. Say, bless God. I'm in the first month of the heaps. By the end of July, you're not even going to recognize me. By the end of July, you won't even, you're going to look at me and go, what in the world happened to you? I know the enemy doesn't like this. He doesn't he want you grabbing a hold of this. He sure doesn't want you getting excited about it. Somebody said, Pastor, you said this in 2021. Why are you doing it again? The Lord spoke to me. He said, when I went back and I played every service from 2021 March, and I realized I actually didn't speak much about it. The Lord said to me, I want you to focus the month of March on heaps for the church and tell them to get ready for another wave of what I'm about to do. Except this is going to be bigger than what we saw in 21. Bigger. So say this all means, thank you, Father, that you have blessed me to be a blessing. Psalm 21 and verse 6. Say this out loud, because I am a tither and a giver, the devourer is rebuked for my sake. According to Malachi 3, 10 and 11. The windows of heaven are open over my life and blessings poured out that there is no room to receive it. I have given and it is given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over comes into, my, uh, comes into me comes into my bosom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you, Lord, in due season, I reap because I do not grow weary 
I continue to sow and do good works and be a blessing. Now, a lot of people, they say, well, Pastor, what happens if somebody comes and takes advantage of you and your generosity? Comes? Look, that always can be the case, but you actually have to teach people. You can help people, but you need to say, okay, so I'm going to help you to hear, and then you need to be in a different position. Otherwise, it is a perpetual thing, where basically you're no different to the American government where everybody just comes, you basically, you are their welfare and their support. And that does not do any good for any person. That's why we at the ministry, even though we've been handing out food for years and feed thousands of families, we make people come to church before they get the food. Otherwise, we would just be handing out food. And we had to change even the way we did the food because People are not stupid. They were taking the food back to the stores and getting credits on the food so they could go buy drugs or alcohol or whatever. People are clever. I mean, they find a way of doing it. So we found out about that, and we run lines through the barcodes. We, we had to stop them from getting drugs. We're not going to be a supplier for your drug addiction or your alcohol or whatever you want. That's not what the River Church is about. We really want to give food to people that actually have a need of food. And you always got people going to take advantage of the situation. But you have to take the time, and teach them, and say, okay, listen, you might be struggling right now, but you're not going to struggle anymore. You're going to have a breakthrough. You're going to see the breakthrough of heaven. Why, why do you think I tell my testimony all the time of how we started out and how we struggled? Why do you think? Because I like talking about it. Those are painful memories. Hello. When you get given a box of asparagus as an offering, a box of canned asparagus, cans of asparagus, cans. Fresh asparagus is one thing, but cans of asparagus. This stuff is terrible. And that was given to me. Pastor Rodney, we just loved your ministry. Here's a box of asparagus. It's not funny. There's people laughing at my misfortune here. For years, as I keep telling you, I suffered from severe asparagusal abuse. If we were in a restaurant and they walked by with a plate of asparagus, the moment I saw it, I'd, I'd start <laughs> twitching, and my wife would have to put her hand on me and go, there, there, honey, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. And it took years for the Lord to deliver me from asparagusal abuse. And now I'm happy to report I can actually eat this stuff. But the last thing you wanted to serve me was asparagus. You, would you like asparagus? No. <laughs> I tell the story for a reason, which I'm sure you'll tell the story. You know, years ago, I was a legal student. <laughs> and... Uh, the Lord helped me with my rent and stuff like that. But I mean, if I find you 10 years later and you still can't pay your rent, I'm going to kick your Dutch behind. I promise you right now. You're going to be productive and you're going to be a blessing, which all the international students are that way. But I promise you, don't let me find you 10 years from now. You're still running around believing God for a miracle to pay your rent. And I'm just teasing him. He's a great guy. Amen. I mean, these things, the difficulties that you might go through, is all building you for tomorrow. So that when the blessing comes, 
you then are thankful and grateful to the Lord and giving Him honor and glory because of His goodness and grace towards you. You don't take it for granted. Well, I'll tell you what, if anybody deserved a blessing, it's me. You should have seen how I suffered. My God. Yeah, we had to live through it. One look at your face, it was very painful. You always look like a tooth extraction. <laughs> this last week, oh my Lord, we were in one city. Is a hilarious, hilarious yeah. stuff we've saw happen. We've never seen happen anywhere in the world. Happened this last week. I should have Lily come tell the story. But um, this is all I can say, the stuff you see in Mississippi. I shouldn't have brought that tooth thing up, <laughs> tooth extraction. Put it this way, there was a bunch of people that had no teeth. <laughs> if you are a dentist and you know how to do teeth, I've got a place for you to go. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Who wants to hear what happened? <laughs> I'll have to, maybe I'll tell you tonight. Maybe we'll do it tonight. <laughs> Not to offend anybody here today with no teeth. Because <laughs> we have a few from Polk County that showed up without. <laughs> You know, I was thinking about it. if we can give away cars, we can give away teeth. <laughs> Lily, come up here. Miss <laughs> Mike. So we have, we have a team, you know, obviously works the offering room. And uh, Lily was back there with Beatrice. And uh, Lily, you might want to put your southern accent on for this to explain what actually happened. This is hilarious. So we, the team meets afterwards always to suss out what happened at the meeting. We get to hear this. We laughed and we cried. Go ahead and tell them. Well, well hey, y'all. <laughs> so we went to the South last week. Uh, I'm originally from Alabama, so I felt right at home. But, you know, we were in Mississippi, and uh, we were in that back room there with the all friends and everything, and um, this guy who was actually the head usher, he was talking about some stuff that was going on that night, and he uh, mentioned that, you know, they had some reserve seating, for the ladies rehabilitation center and they all don't have no teeth they they didn't have no teeth whatsoever these ladies and then they had a lady come in with no teeth so they sat her with the ladies rehabilitation center but turns out she wasn't a part of that group she just had no teeth so they were talking to each other and he was like, who sat the lady there? Just because she don't got no teeth don't mean that she belongs with the rehabilitation ladies. And they were like, who did that? And the other guy was like, 
Janet, Janet done sat him there and he was like, oh gosh, Janet's always doing that kind of stuff. Just doing her own thing and they. <laughs> so you guys are trying to count the offering. Tell him what he was making comments so, on each offering. Yes, sir. So we, you know, we're, we're doing stuff and, and as the offerings are being opened and everything, he was looking at his buddy and was like, is that your nephew that gave that much money? $60? Didn't he owe you $60? And he's giving it in the offering. Another, another envelope open. He's like, they got $150. They, they're, oh my gosh, I didn't know they had that much money. Shoot. So that's what, that's what she had to deal with. And we got to hear about it. I tell you what, we were crying. Only happens in Mississippi, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> but I think what was interesting was he's the head usher. He knew everybody in the church. And so he was shocked because somebody gave 50 bucks. Now, of course, we don't have that happen in our rooms when we do stuff here. It's got nothing to do with anybody's business, but he knew everybody's business. I can't believe she gave 20. Didn't she owe you 20? <laughs> if you are watching from Massachusetts, stop it. I mean, Mississippi, stop it. Stop that. He, hasn't, he didn't go to RBI or RU. He wasn't trained. And let me just say this. We don't designate. If you have teeth or no teeth, we treat everybody the same. We just won't feed you burgers. We'll give you a soup. You can suck through a straw. Amen. And that had nothing to do with the message here today. <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> but I told you we tell everything. All right. Now, we, we are the ones that make the choice. Listen to me very carefully. Choices you're making now in March of 2024 is going to be what sets the tone for you for the next three to five, six years. So somebody said, well, what do I have to do? You just have to make a choice. And here's the beautiful thing about the Word of God. It's to all who believe. It's to every single person. God's no respect of persons. You can only say this so many times. You can't go out and earn this. There's not one of you that's eligible to receive any of the blessing of the Lord by you earning anything. Amen. Even if you went out and memorized the whole Bible. Even if you went out and personally led 100,000 people to the Lord, you can't earn any of this stuff. Because I meet people in the ministry all the time. They work hard. Some people have been in the ministry 40 years. They never received any of the blessing. Because they didn't know it was available for them to receive. In actual fact, the place where they come up through, the people they were trained about told them God didn't have anything for them. They were told the only blessing you receive is when you go to heaven. While you're here on the earth, you'll just struggle. And they believed it. And the people around them modeled that. Yeah. Modeled that. The message they preached produced that. Yeah. The message we preach here does not produce that. Yes. The message we preach here produces life and blessing. Why? Because we believe in God to shake whole nations. You cannot shake a nation if you can't even shake yourself out of bed in the morning time to get to church because the hour moved later. Sorry, did that come out of my mouth? All right. You can't shake a nation if you can't even shake yourself out of inactivity. You can't shake anything if you are embalmed with apathy and unbelief. Amen. 
The choice is yours. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that you and your seed may live. So say this out loud. I choose life and blessing. I choose life and blessing. So that I and my children may live. So that I and my children may live. Preservation. Preservation. Restoration. Restoration. Long life. Quality of life, life. growth and prosperity. prosperity. Proverbs 10 and 22. The blessing of the Lord. Lord. It makes truly rich. rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. it. Neither does toiling increase. increase. So it's not that the work is going to be more. Somebody said, I'll tell you what, I just... Wish that the heaps had never come my way. Since heap had come my way, my work's through the roof. I didn't even know what to do. He says, toiling doesn't increase. It adds no sorrow with it. Why is it that people that have great wealth have a lot of sorrow? Why? Because it's not the blessing of the Lord. It's not the blessing of the Lord. Because of the blessing of the Lord, we don't need the help of government. Or the banks. God is our source and our supply. Amen. And we have access to heaven's bank, which has unlimited supply. And no one can access it, so they can't rob your account. How many knew that you have a heavenly bank account? Who knew that? No, they can't access it. They can't even get it so that they can get taxes off of what's in your heavenly bank account. Proverbs 11 and verse 17. It says, The merciful, a kind and generous man, benefits himself for his deeds return to bless him. So you blessing others, those deeds of blessing others are going to turn around and bless you. Amen. God is our source and our supply. The scripture says in Proverbs 11, 24 to 25, there are those who are generously given scatters abroad and yet increase more. The generous person shall be enriched and he who waters shall himself be watered. And then Psalm 107, 23 to 24, which you know I love this passage of scripture. In actual fact, if we still have the scriptures of this, I know that some of them were dated with a date, but we just need to put them back up. But this one is so powerful. Psalm 107, 23 and 24 they that go down to the sea and ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and these wonders in the deep. Amen. Now, let me close along these lines and I want you to think about this. These, those that go down to the sea and ships these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Now, it's easy to say, oh, that's a wonderful scripture. But it's another thing to get out into the deep and the waves are up high. And you are in a situation when, when you're out sailing. How many, you know, when you always see a cruise ship, you always see it's just like calm waters. But how many know that many times it's not? You ask people, how was it? For four days we tossed. People were sick all over. They were throwing up their food. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's the cruise industry. You know, they don't even cancel. They just try to dodge the storm, but there are times they don't get through the storm. Who's seen the videos of furniture sliding from side to side? Who's seen that? Anybody been on a ship where it's been rough? See, wave your hand at me. Oh, Okay. So what does it say? We might find ourselves in rough waters, but we're not going down. Amen. We're not going to sink. We're not going under. We're going to see the wonders of the Lord in the deep. Amen. We're going to see God undertake for us. It's in the place of the greatest upheavals that you'll see the greatest miracles. It's in the place where you actually cry out, Lord, please, if you don't come through, we're done. 
That's when the greatest breakthrough comes. It's not the ones that are just sailing on the, on the flat lake that bench out and say, I'm a seaman, I'm worthy, you know, I, I can charter waters. You've never even left your pond. You in your back pond, bro. You haven't even launched out into the deep. It's the ones that are out there in the deep waters that will see the wonder works of God. And so I'm saying all that to say this. Will there be times when you're confronted by fear? Will you confronted by there'll be suddenly things, a storm comes up out of the blue and you weren't even expecting that? Again, I refer to four years ago when I got arrested. I, that wasn't on the list of things to do. What? It wasn't even my mind. I know I'd said that. I know I said that back four or five years before. If anybody's going to be arrested, I'd probably be the first one. I know I said that. Somebody said, well, you see, because you spoke it, you chose life. No, I'm, it's got nothing to do with speaking. I knew. Yeah. I knew. And I'm not saying this because of anything coming. I'm not saying this because of what's going to happen. I'm just saying this because you're going, many of you, into uncharted waters. Yeah. The things that God's going to have you do that nobody's done before. Yes. How many have said, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be what you want me to be. How many say, Lord, I want to see the impossible. Well, how are you going to see the impossible sitting on your porch? Well, this is just great, Pastor. So you're telling me I must put myself into difficult situations so I can see the miraculous? Let me think about it. Yes. Yes. What's a testimony? If it's not about deliverance from the lion, I was thrown into the lion's den. I was in the burning fiery furnace. Yeah. Goliath was coming against me. Where, where are all those testimonies? Yeah. And we could sit and read through the scripture yeah. and read through God's word. And we can rejoice at the miraculous. Oh, isn't it wonderful what God did here? And look what he did there. Well, what's he done for you? Yeah. Because that's where the power is released. Right. Can you say amen? amen? And by your breakthrough, someone relates to you because it's easy. Yes, well, you're a preacher, whatever. But when they hear God doing it with everyday, ordinary people that they don't, because they think, well, God only does that with certain preachers. But they don't actually understand. I'm actually an everyday, ordinary person. Because yeah. I sat where you sit. And I had to face what you face. And I had to break through. And if we hadn't have broken through, we wouldn't be here today. None of us would be here today. This pavilion wouldn't even be here today. The big ass fans wouldn't even be here today. <laughs> And I will just say this, had I, had I not been arrested four years ago, I don't believe this would be happening. Yeah. Had we hadn't had COVID-19. So I thank God for COVID-19. What a great pandemic. In actual fact, I think two years later, I started praying, God said another plague. I did. I thought... Just stir them up. I mean, stir them up. People are getting too comfortable. Yeah, by 2023, people are getting comfortable. I started praying for another pandemic. Lord, just make this one worse than the last one. You know what I'm saying? I'm just teasing. But don't get soft and don't get comfortable. Press in. Push. Push. Don't get soft. Don't get comfortable. Push. Push. Now, one more thing. 
and I unfortunately have to relate this just to everyday life. When a woman gets pregnant, the start of the pregnancy, and I know some of you, what do you know about a woman being pregnant? I've been through three of them. When a woman gets pregnant, obviously everything changes. And she's making room in her body for the baby. The body stores up the supply of fat, which is terrible. She doesn't like getting fat, but when she breastfeeds, that's going to be the supply for the milk for the baby. It's very important, which I think that's why they try to stop women from breastfeeding so then the woman doesn't know how to get rid of the weight and all that kind of stuff. You need to fight to protect the ability to feed your children. Are you with me? From your own supply, not from some can of formula or whatever. So I said, I didn't know I was going to get lectured on this here today. Well, there's a lot of things you're going to get told here at the river, whether you want to hear it or don't. <laughs> but then, and things might be easy in the earlier days, but then the, you have to, she has to get the clothing to go along to make room, which is totally contrary to her mind. I'm getting fat. Yeah, but there's a reason you've got something... A child, a little boy, a little girl, they're growing, or twins or whatever. Obviously, if you can do twins, that's better, because you save yourself time. If you can do triplets, <laughs> that's even better. Three nines are 27. Instead of 27 months, you just do nine months. It's much easier that way. Uh, <laughs> amen. And uh, obviously, she gets hungry. So she gets hungry. She craves food. She eats. She wants to eat and stuff like that. And my wife when she, she got hungry many times and she eat, but they eat, then they realize they don't want it, then they give you the food. <laughs> and of course, I was taught you never let anything go to waste. So I ate everything, I ate what I ate, plus I ate what she didn't eat. <laughs> With every pregnancy, I put on 25 pounds. <laughs> she lost the weight, I never lost the weight. So that's the the bad side of pregnancy for a man, if you don't understand it, when they shove food at you, don't eat the food. You have no way to lose that weight. They do. So it's not fair. <laughs> Plus the cravings, which could be anything from ice cream in the middle of the night. They want ice cream. Or whatever food they want. Who knows? Each person is different. And then the last trimester, that's when things become difficult. It becomes difficult to move. It's difficult to lie in the bed. You roll over, you feel uncomfortable. It doesn't matter what you do, you feel totally uncomfortable. And then the whole thing of the onset of when the contractions start and then the water breaks and going to the hospital. Now, let me tell you, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with. She could have handled everything fine up to that moment, but she still has to pop that thing out. <laughs> Which a man has no clue about what that is even like. Men cannot handle the pain. They can't, they're babies. Men, men can't, they have to be, anyway. I know the men are looking at me, please stop it right now, but let me tell you, women are built in a way that they can handle the child being delivered that way. <laughs> but there's a moment, and it didn't happen with my wife because she spoke the word of everything. She had, she had contraction, but she had painless childbirth. Basically, that's what we believe God for, and she delivered all three. But the other woman in the same ward was screaming. <laughs> you thought they were being murdered, and they were just giving birth. And the fear, you know, the whole fear and whatever. And I mean, that's when the wife grabs her husband and says, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Never again. You know, because of that whole undergoing. But the moment the child is born, they, everybody forgets. They forget that. And isn't he cute? And they're beautiful. He has daddy's eyes. His mommy's nose. Hello. Now, somebody said, well, what's that got to do with me? I'm not pregnant. Um, 
If God's putting something on the inside of you, in the spirit, you are pregnant. You're giving birth to that thing. Listen. It becomes to the place where it's virtually unbearable. And then suddenly, the water breaks. And then you see the breakthrough of what you've been believing God for. So I want, I'm saying this to encourage many of you because I believe there are people here that are pregnant with what God is doing on the inside of you with what's going to take place, whether it be your business or your ministry or whatever, but it shall come to pass and you'll be on the other side. Don't forget him. Don't, what did he say? You shall remember the Lord your God as he gives you the power to create wealth to establish your covenant. Don't forget him. Remember him and stay in that place of grace and watch what's going to happen because there's always going to be another challenge where the Lord challenges you to do something else and then it's going to be ignited on the inside of you. It's going to be birth and you're going to have to give birth to that and the same process of giving birth to the last thing, you have to give birth to the next thing and that's where the blessing comes. But you have to understand, children are a blessing from the Lord. Once you have them, you, don't, you can't even think of your life without them. How would my life be without that? You can't even think of that. And of course, as you grow older, you're much happier when your children have the children because they the ones have to go through all the dirty work and stuff. And you just smile and be very happy and give them hugs and tell them how much you love them. Which is really what the Lord does to us. Can you say amen? Is this helping anybody here today? So... Maybe the reason why some people are staring at me is because you're very, very pregnant. And what God is birthing on the inside of you is something very big. I'm throwing out possibilities. For some of you today, no matter what I said, you just kept looking. Now, that can either be because you're foreign language and you haven't understood one word of what I said here today. Or you are in that place right now. And you're about to see the hand of God and what God is about to do. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How was the service today? Um, fine, I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> Which is very confusing to me in this gender confused world right now because I don't even know how to answer that as even as a man. There's people here, God is getting ready in the next three to five years to go birth things in foreign countries and nations. And then I've got to say this, you ask for the fire and then you get upset because the fire starts to burn. You ask for the fire. I want the fire of God to come burn in me. Then you get mad because everything looks like it's in an upheaval. You were the one that prayed that the fire would come. It's a refiner's fire. It's a purifying fire. It's a fire that burns out all of the dross. 
And everything that the Lord is doing in you right now is to prepare you for what is coming. So when the overflow and the flood breaks forth in your life, you can handle what's coming. It will not crush you. It will not destroy you. It will not ruin you. Tell you, the power of God's falling all over this field right now. I prophesy this is going to be a supernatural week. Amen. This week, this week, this Monday, this Tuesday, this Wednesday, this Thursday, this Friday, this Saturday. It's going to be a supernatural week. In every realm of your life. I just felt like a blanket just covered the whole congregation right now. (laughs) This sick body is being healed right now in this room. People came in here with symptoms. The Lord is touching you right now. God is healing you right now. God's delivering somebody from prescription medication right now. God's setting you free from prescription drugs where you could not survive. The doctors told you you wouldn't make it without those drugs. Those things are going to go from you and every need for those things are going to be taken away from your life and your life shall be a testimony. And the critics out there, you can make all the reels you want to about me. You can mock me any which way you want to. I don't care. Oh, I watch the stuff and I'm pretty amused that you wouldn't even take the time and pay attention to what I'm saying here so you can pull up some little information for your little stupid podcast. Your little religious ignoramus, you. You're nothing more than a giant turd in the, in, the, in the scheme of things. But I'll just watch you swirl in the bottom of the toilet bowl as you get flushed. Religious excrement. It's what they are, religious excrement. Think they're doing something for the body of Christ and doing nothing. Have no understanding of what they're even picking on. Don't know what the scripture, the fact that you can even mock scripture as it is, shows how in, in, idiotic and ignoramus, what an ignoramus you are that you don't even understand what the word of God actually says. I don't have to cite scripture every time I quote it or speak it. Just because you don't know where the reference is. What a moron. There's not one in particular, there's dozens of them out there. Facebook and YouTube and floating turds. What do, you, what do you do? Floating turret ministry. <laughs> Come here, let me smear you one more time. <laughs> What's the name of your ministry? Who flung dung ministry? The next thing you'll tell me, you called to China. (laughs) 
Come on, breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough. Blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Be blessed. Be thou blessed. Be abundantly blessed. Be excessively blessed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, that's what I had in my spirit for this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll just sum up what I just said. Somebody said, I can't believe you used the word turd and that. But when a baby's a baby, you know what they do? They play with their stools. They smear the walls and stuff. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And that's all they are. These people think they mature in the body of Christ. The little toddlers sitting in a little crib, rubbing dung on the wall and all that. They, they, they stool smearers. Never been trained up, not submitted to anybody. And that's just unfortunate. And they have, there's churches full of stool smearers. And I'll leave it at that. And I've actually been nice. I really chose my words correctly this morning. I've been nice. Because I could have said a whole bunch more. Amen. Praise God. Well, how many are ready to sow seed this morning? What month is this? First month of the? Increase. But say increase. increase. Multiplication. Multiplication. Blessing. Blessing. Yes. Well, I want the ushers to come and hand the offering envelope. Service is not over yet. I'll tell you when it is. Do what God tells you to do. If you're watching online, Pastor Eric's going to come and give instruction. Obey the Holy Ghost today. Obey the Holy Ghost today. Let me pray, Father, we call in all the provision for your people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Multiply now the seed that is sown. Take what your people put in your hands and multiply the seed. And I'm asking you for this week, to be a week of extreme blessing for your church and for your people. While the world suffer loss and goes through many struggles, your people shall reign as kings according to your word. And we thank you for it now. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Pastor Eric. Hallelujah. The ushers are handing out the envelopes down the road now. Of course, make your checks out to the river. You can also give electronically if you choose. And for everybody else watching around the world on satellite television and all the other platforms, this is your opportunity to worship the Lord with your giving. You can go to revival.com, revival.com, and click Invest Now. And then on whichever way you're watching, you'll be able to see on the screen several different ways to sow seed revival.com and then of course through your cell phone you can give through push pay or text message giving text 77977 give river right through your cell phone text 77977 give river also you can give through cash app which is dollar sign revival ministries uh, it's a blue logo it's revival ministries Please put your first and last name, your business name, or your ministry name as you so see that way. Also, the direct link on Revival.com is on the screen, Revival.com forward slash giving, Revival.com forward slash PayPal, of course, is another option for you to so see that way. And then also, you can call the call center right now on a Sunday morning. You can give by calling into the prayer and care center. And if we missed you with an envelope, raise your hand. We'll get it to you here. And then, of course, you can always mail a love gift in. You can send it in by mail to the River Church or to Revival Ministries International, 
P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida, 33687. And also, for those given electronically, there's a drop-down box. You know, we have the 300 one-night Holy Ghost and Fire meetings, Africa coming up, seven countries in Africa, London, of course, the building, uh, a fund that we have to build for the, all of the building and the new expansion we're doing here. All those different options are available. So do what the Lord is telling you to do. And once again, here under the Great Pavilion, if we missed you with an envelope, raise your hand. We'll make sure we serve that to you. And all the other ways to give or of course, up on the screen or whichever way you're watching. And then also, we do have Church Will. Um, we'll put that up for those. We make it available for everybody in uh, the United States to be able to get a free will. And if you would like to bequest Revival Ministries International uh, in your will, you can do that. It is wills, living wills, trust are available at no cost, and we make that available for you. So we'll just give you a few more moments to get your offerings ready. Which we would prefer you give while you're alive and not in the unlikely event of your death, which thank God for your giving, and if you do die, but I'd rather have you living. Can you say amen? I don't want you dead. I like people living. We can't do anything with dead people. Somebody just messaged me and said, my second child was 12 pounds at birth. It's not funny. That's a very big child. How do you give birth to a 12 pound child? Just so you know, the next three weeks, I'm not going anywhere. I'm here and be through the ladies' conference. We're just going to focus on the River Church the next three weeks. I wanted to slip another six cities in, but my wife said absolutely not. And she won. So, amen. <sighs> So much to do, so little time. Stop laughing, evangelist uncle. Ladies' conference is going to be great, huh? Last one was the best one I've ever been to. It was really great. Everybody ready to give? How would you react if the thing you were believing God for was meant? All right, you may be seated. I should go ahead and receive the offering.
east and west, and every place between. Come on in, multiply to a lovely shade of green. As you press down, shaking together, running over, so I can so good see to reach the greatest harvest of soul the church has ever seen. to listen to what I'm saying cause this is not a gimmick you've come too far to back off now and I'll bring you good news when you sow in seed to bring a harvest of souls there's no way you're gonna lose Go ahead and we'll sing the blessing and wait for the others to get back the blessing. Speak this over your life today. Over your families, your children. In his favor, he 
Come on and lift your hands and just say, he is for me. Everybody say, he is for me. He's not against me. He's on my side. He loves me. This is my week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Just stretch your hand out towards the prayer request. Let's just pray over them, and then us is going to come hand out communion. We're going to receive communion together. Father, in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, we lift up every prayer request that's coming. This represents a family, a home, a life touched, an individual that reached out in faith and called the number. Grant unto them miracles today, we pray. Let them never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Just bow your heads for a moment. If you did come here today and you fit in any one of these three categories before we receive communion, I want to give an invitation. Maybe you came here today, a friend brought you, you've never been to the river at all, but today you don't know Jesus and you would like to ask him to come and be Lord and Savior of your life. As I always tell people, if you mean busy with God, God means busy with you. And today is your day of salvation and freedom and deli deliverance. All it takes is for you to surrender and say, yes, Lord, I give myself to you. I humble myself. You can't earn this. You can't buy this, as I've already told you today. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What would happen if today was your final day on the earth? You went home and put your head on your pillow in the middle of the night, you passed. Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Just like that old song said, there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood, lose all the guilty stain. Today, the power of sin will be broken and the power of guilt and shame will be removed from your life. You might have come here one way, but you'll leave another way. Today, he calls you. One of the things that really hit me four years ago in that open vision, in the early hours of March the 17th, was when that fire came and went into me and the Lord said to me, the end is not yet. He said, I'm sifting my people. I'm separating the wheat from the tares, the profane from what's holy, the false from what's real, and I'm purifying my bride because he said, they're not ready for my coming, but I love them so much, I'm going to get them ready for my coming. That crushed me because I felt the overwhelming weight of his love. That if you knew how much he loved you today, you would never have another depressed day. That you would not worry about your life or your safety or your tomorrow or your provision or any of that stuff. You would know that the Lord is with you and he's on your side. And I don't know how to do this in any other way because I don't have the time to look each of you in the eyes and say to you, do you know how much he loves you today? I wish I could, but I can't. But I'm asking you today, do you know how much he loves you? You have to surrender to that love and say, yes, Lord. Maybe you're here, you say, Pastor, I gave my life to the Lord in days gone by, but I've grown cold. I'm not serving God like I should. I've allowed the things of the world to come in. I've lost my first love, the peace, the joy that I once had. There was a time when I was on fire for God, but maybe it's stuff that's hidden. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, the hidden things. Maybe it's something outward. Everyone can see you, which makes it worse because you feel what's the use, but yet God says, come. Come unto me, all ye that labor and have it laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn in me, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come. Will you surrender today? Will you say, yes, Lord Jesus? He loves you. He loves you. His Holy Spirit is calling you now. He said, my spirit will not always strive with man. He calls you. He says, come, come. Will you surrender to him today? Maybe it's not hidden or outward, but a storm that came against your life, a sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job, something happened that rocked your world, shook you to the core. But today you say, you know, I'm coming back. I'm going to fall in love with Jesus all over again. And then lastly, maybe you hear and you say, Pastor, I do love the Lord, but I don't have the assurance that I'm a child of God. And I'd like to make sure before I leave this building today that I know that I know that I know that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. If this is you and you fit in any one of these categories, remember he's looking at the heart and the temperature of the heart. You're either hot, lukewarm, or cold. And this is not the hour to be cold, definitely not. Neither is the hour to be lukewarm. This is the hour to be radical and on fire. In Jesus' name, if this is you, I want to pray with you and for you right where you are. Put your hand up and say, pray for me right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just slip it up high and say, yes, yes, that's me, that's me. He's calling you right now. And he says, come. He loves you. He loves you. Anybody else? The Lord is speaking to you right now. You say, yes, 
I'm not leaving this place the same way I came. Thank you. Once you've raised it, you can put it down. I want everybody to look at me, please, over on this side, which is the west side of the pavilion. If you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included, quickly slip your hand up and say, include me. Anybody else? Just say, yes, Pastor. Thank you. I've seen your hand. This middle section, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. Slip your hand up right now. Thank you. Anybody else? And then over on the west side of the pavilion, you didn't raise your hand, but want to be included. I've seen your hand already. So anybody else? Slip it all the way through the back. I want every person that raised their hand to stand all across the building and then quickly stand. I want you to bring your personal belongings and just come, come down here. We're gonna to pray together, come. I says if you help them. To follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided no turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. Just come right now. He's calling you. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. You could take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You could take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. No turning back. Before we praise anybody else that should be here, you know God's calling you, you feel your heart pounding away, and the Lord tells you, now, respond. He said, my spirit will not always strive with man. What happens is God calls, and then he calls again, and then he calls again, and then he doesn't call anymore. Just quickly come before we pray. It's a holy moment right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to look at me right now. Standing here today are individuals that have come here, maybe first time, maybe you've come to recommit your life or you've come to make sure if you mean business with God, God means business with you. And this is all about surrender, to say, Lord, I've tried my own path, I've tried my own way, it really hasn't worked, but today I'm not doing that anymore. I'm gonna go your way and follow your plan and your purpose. And for religious people, this might just be a call, where I can have a call, but for me, this is a life-changing moment. It's a crossroads in the, in the, in the sand. Where on this date, the 10th day of March, 2024, 
is when you said, yes, Lord, I surrender my life to you. We can't earn any of this. We can't buy it. It's free. But we humble ourselves to receive it. And he is the same to everybody. He doesn't have one for one group and something else for another group. He loves everybody the same. And so we're going to pray in faith. So I just want you to close your eyes, raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And for you watching in your homes to pray this after me out loud. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So, Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart. Put in the heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world and I turn my back on sin and I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Now lift your hands and just thank him right now. Just thank him and give him praise. Father, thank you for each person that's come today. I pray that you will touch them. I break every bondage, every addiction, every chain, every yoke off of them right now and set them free. I break every curse. I send it back to this point of origin. And Father, from this day that you raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them. Give them an amazing testimony now of your glory and your grace that they will take and share with others and that lives will be touched and changed. And I thank you for that. And we give you honor. Now just thank him. I want to hear you. Just thank him. The Lord take a few moments and thank him right now. Just thank him for what he's doing. Thank him for what he's done. And Lord, I pray the peace of heaven upon them right now. In Jesus' name. I want you to turn, if you go through this way, follow Pastor Mark, Pastor Shannon, Pastor Jason, everybody, if you would, ushers, help them. If you would, please. Just go through. Today's your day of freedom and liberty. I want to ask the ushers to come if you'd hand out the communion, please, with everybody. Come on, this is awesome. Thank God for the harvest. Pastor Jason, the young man right in front of you. I want you to help him talk to him. Yeah, please. Thank you, Jesus. How many are glad that we're focusing this month on this subject? I'll wait till everybody receives communion.
If really want to encourage you to please watch the news program um, later. It should be posted already. It's very important. I put that out so people can see what's happening. It frustrates me when people in the congregation sends me things I've talked about in my own news program two weeks ago. And I go, where were you? So um, please watch and send it out. Get, get it out to as many people as possible. Don't get banned on your Facebook and your YouTube. I use that for the gospel. If you're not using it for the gospel, then by all means get banned. Amen. If you're just using it to post food of what restaurant you ate at, stuff like that, that, that's a useless waste of a social media site. I'll wait till everybody has. Does everybody have communion? Ashes? Everybody has? Everybody have? What we're holding in our hands, the Bible calls this one of the ordinances of the church, like water baptism and uh, communion. It's that which we practice as part of our doctrine. That in our hands we hold this cup and the bread, the bread that represents the body that was broken for us, that by the stripes of Jesus we healed, and the cup that represents the blood that was shed for us. This, this bread, the Bible says they could not leave Egypt till they had the lamb in them. This bread represents the lamb, and they could not leave Egypt till they had the blood over them. This represents the blood of Jesus. So as we take of this bread and we put it in our mouth, I'm believing the Lord that there's going to be a quickening in people's bodies and that sickness and disease will be removed from your body just while you're sitting here. The moment you put the bread in your mouth, that your body will be strengthened, your blood renewed, your lungs, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your bones. That this will be a quick work, like a giant healing service right now. Yes, there's laying on our hands, but there's communion. So right now we forgive anyone who has ever hurt us in any way, shape, or fashion because the Bible is very plain. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. So Father, we do that right now. We hold no ill will towards them, nor do we wish any bad thing to happen to them. In Jesus' name, we even pray for our enemies. I pray for the giant floating turds that, Lord, you would... I don't know what you can do with them, but only you know. But try to help them. In Jesus' name, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice for your healing power to flood their life from the top of their head to the very soles of their feet, that not one will die prematurely. Every single one of them will run their race to the completion. And so hear these words, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou the joy of the Lord. So we receive this now by faith in the finished work of the cross. In Jesus' name. And now this cup represents your blood, the blood that washes us clean, the blood that washes us clean from all sin, guilt, and shame, the blood that keeps us pure and holy, the blood that seals us till the day of redemption, the blood that also protects us when no plan of the enemy will even succeed. No one shall have any fear by night or by day, by land, by sea, or by air. Each one shall travel, shall sleep in peace and safety. And Father, we thank you for it. And today we drink of this cup. You said as often as we eat this bread, drink this cup. We show your death till you come. We look back at Calvary 
but we look forward to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we drink now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just thank him right now. Every muscle, every tissue, every sinew, every cell, every fiber of your body, to the very marrow of your bones, healed and whole. In Jesus' name, a quickening even now, a quickening by your mighty hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's somebody that's been having major problems with your digestive system. And for whatever reason, I know this is personal, but you've been terribly constipated. But the Lord's going to bring a release. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> Amen. See the hand of God coming upon you, working on your body. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Pastor, that's not a problem. It, for you might not be, but for the person suffering with it, it is a problem. If you've ever had that problem, you know what I'm talking about. It's a problem. We're trying to get people healed. <laughs> Have some compassion, people. <laughs> Digestive system being healed right now. There's people that suffer from food allergies. God's healing. Not so you can go eat junk. But the Lord's touching you and healing you, setting you free right now. Problem in your respiratory system, your lungs, being healed right now. In Jesus' name. Your circulatory system. Being healed right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's trying to get back to his seat. He's trying to get back to his seat. The guy's trying to get back to his seat. It's called awareness of where people are sitting. That when they go to the toilet, they come back, they can get back to their seat. I even know where the guy's sitting, and I'm not even an usher. He nearly got arrested and thrown out. I'm just kidding, but sorry. He's from Switzerland. I mean, he doesn't know where he is half the time. Please, just bear with the guy. That's why he's here in healing school. If you lived in Switzerland, you'd know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Well, as I was saying, we were praying for the sick before I was rudely interrupted. Circulatory system, your circulation, you had a problem with circulation. God's touching you right now. Problem in your bones, in your joints. Inflammation in your bones. God's healing people with problems in your bones right now.
your bones have been dry. God's making your bones fat. No, I never said he's making you fat. He's making your bones fat. Your bones get fat inside, in the marrow. Sinuses are clearing right now. Skin condition is being healed in Jesus' name. Skin condition. Psoriasis. Skin condition. Insomnia. You can't sleep at night. The Lord's touching you right now. You'll sleep tonight. Not like a baby because most of them scream through the night. But you'll sleep tonight in peace. You'll sleep in peace. And I'm just going to say this. There's some of you that are suffering from problems. You need to disconnect yourself from your devices. Move it far from you for the night. Don't keep it with you. Why are you looking at me like that? Listen to me. That's hindering you. Move it away from you into another room. Amen. Trying to help people here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know this sounds strange, what I'm about to tell you. There's somebody here you've been experiencing, your hair's been falling out. For whatever reason, just you've been losing your hair. That stops from today in Jesus' name. And I'm not talking to the bald people here. <laughs> I'm talking to people with hair, been losing hair. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Another individual, you're the nervous situation, nervous, very nervous, always your nerves, on the edge. Your nerves, you're on edge all the time. But right now, the Lord's touching you. It's peace. It's total peace. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm not sure if I'm drunk or what I am right now, but I feel, I feel a little woozy myself. I think I've been drinking a little too much here this morning. So why didn't you all have a drink just for the road? Go ahead, just throw your hands up and have a drink. Once again, Lord, for all the singles here, if you can give a Swiss lady a miracle that can get married by the end of the week, then could you help some of the others here? Lord, even though some things look suspect to us, but who are we to judge? <laughs> May this be a joyful week. May this be a week of great victory. <laughs> Amen. Who's joining me tonight? I'll be in the sanctuary. Who's joining me tonight? All right. Well, I won't tell you what I'm doing tonight. This, tonight's only for special people. So if you're not one of them, don't come. Amen. Praise God. Well, everybody stand.
Anybody? <laughs> what you doing up there? Let's sing a song rejoicing. We love you. See you tonight. Until 